So hello, welcome back. This week we're going to continue on um, last week's lesson. So we're continuing on relations and functions. Um, today we're going to be covering relations and functions, which is kind of just like a review, um, and then linear versus nonlinear functions and intercepts, and then we're also going to learn how to interpret graphs. So here's a bit of review. Um, last week, we talked a bit about independent variables, which we called inputs, um, and that was just a variable that is being manipulated. Um, the independent variable can be any number, but it's usually called x, just for convention. Um, and the dependent variable is the output, and it's a variable that depends on the value of the independent, so the x. Um, and you know, y is usually used to represent. Um, discrete data is just data that can be certain values. And continuous data is data that can be any range, any value, with, um, but within the domain range. So I left a little blank slide here so we could kind of draw draw out um, an input output, I want to say machine, but teachers usually wouldn't call it that. I will call it that though, an input output machine. So what a function basically was, um, if you remember from last class, it's kind of like a machine. So we have an input and then let's, it goes into the machine. I'm trying my best. My drawing skills are not the best, but um, hopefully you can tell this is kind of like a box, and this is a conveyor belt. I want to say. <laughs> um, let me let me add some rollers to make it look more realistic. Okay, that didn't really help. Anyways, so our function would look a bit like this. If we were going to call our function f of x, um, then our input would be the independent variable the x. It goes into the machine the function of f and what comes out is the output which would be y but since this is a function we'll call it f of x function of x let me write this down um, oh no the white doesn't really show well does it um um of x. So this is our output. Now, um, if you do need a bit more review, feel free to watch last week's lesson. It should be up on our YouTube channel. So now we're going to go into some new stuff. Um, this is pretty, pretty basic. We're not going to start doing crazy equations yet, but we're just going to take a bit uh, look at linear versus nonlinear graphs. So before I continue any further, let me just tell you what those are. So it's it's pretty self-explanatory. A linear relation is any equation that gives you a straight line when it's graphed. And a nonlinear relation is just <laughs> not an equation that doesn't result in a straight line. Yeah. Um, so how can we tell whether a graph is linear or not? Well, um, in a linear function, it's a straight line. No curves. Um, yeah, if it's a, if it has any curves, like it's it's not a linear function. So over here, I have a table value. So like, what if you're not given a graph? What if you're given a table of values like I have here? Well, you can still tell whether it's a linear function or not by examining the x and y values. So if the rate of change, which is what we're gonna sh what I'm gonna show you later for y is the same, then it is a linear function. So over here, I have a column for my x values and a column for my y values. Now I want to find out whether this, is, this one graph is going to be a linear function. So let's find out the rate of change. So the, I, wanna, I don't want to call this the rate of change because that sounds way too fancy and very complicated. I will call this the difference of y values because that's basically what we're going to look for. Of y values. Okay, difference of y values. So what we're basically going to do is between each between each um, y value, we're going to find out um, the difference. So 
uh, over here, let's just, the easiest way of finding a difference of something is subtracting. So what we can do is just subtract four, negative four, from, or subtract negative one from negative four. This results in negative four minus negative one. Um, whenever you have two, uh, two, how do I say this? Two negatives, it's going to be a positive. So this is basically a positive, um, negative four. Plus one is negative three. Next, we have negative, negative one minus two. Minus two. Oh, the reason I put brackets around the first one, like over here, was because if I didn't, it would look really confusing because then I would just have two like negative signs beside each other. Um, but yeah, usually I should be putting a brackets around all of the values to make it more clear, but um, yeah. So if I have negative one minus two, it would be negative three, same thing over here. Two minus five would be negative three. Five minus eight would be negative three. Right, so as you can see here, all of the, okay, so the difference between each of these two values for the entire table of values was negative three. Let me circle it to make it more obvious. Or maybe I should highlight it. Um, the difference is negative three. So from my definition on the left side, does, can you tell whether this is a linear function or not? Okay, so yes, if the rate of change for y, which is basically like the difference in y values, like, you know, um, if this is the same, then it is a linear function. Like if we had a sudden jump, let's say that in a different graph, if we had a sudden jump in the middle, like this was a four or something, then that would automatically, we would rule out the linear function. It would not be linear. Um, but to kind of further illustrate, let's try graphing it. So I wanna grab another slide. Insert slide, blank slide. I'm going to grab a slide and I will draw a graph. Let me grab a ruler. 90 degrees. Oop. Oop. Okay. So I just drew out a Cartesian plane and we're going to try graphing it. So let me just plot some, draw some dashes on here to give us some um, scale. And let's make our scale, wait, so how big is the table of values? It goes up to eight, but I don't think we can draw that big. So let's go up by ones. I might have had to draw it a bit bigger. Okay, so now let's go up by ones. Will that be enough? Yes, I believe so. All right, so um, we're going to plot all of these points onto our graph and see whether or not it's linear. So let's give it a try. So our first point would be negative two and four. Our x value is negative two. And our y value is four. So negative two, four up here. Approximately there. Oh, that was pretty bad actually. Um, okay. And our next value, negative one and negative one here. Oh, I, I realized that I forgot to put a negative in front of these. And our next value, zero and two. So zero and then go up two. Next, wait, did I graph this correctly? Oh, negative one and negative one. Zero and negative four. Ah, before this was negative four. Oops, I put positive four, so let me. Yeah, right now it is not a linear function. 
as the five points. So we need to do a negative four. So down here, then uh, one and five. I don't think we have five here. Yeah, five is off the graph, so let's stop it here. Okay, so this is what our graph looks like once we plot down the points from our table of values. Um, you can see that it's not perfectly linear. Like if I lined it up with a ruler, not all of the points would be perfectly in line, but um, this graph was not to scale. It's not very approximate, but um, you know, it's hand-drawn, lots of room for error. But you can kind of see that this does, it does approximately make a line. Like if we were to graph this out on, you know, graph paper or grid paper, then it would indeed make a line. That's how we know that it is a linear function. Um, but obviously, an easier way would just be to find the difference of y values. OK, so over here um, is a bit of practice. We want to identify whether these tables of values are linear or not. So I'll just do um, two. I don't want to spend too much time on this. So let's just go with this one and this one. So this first one. We want to find the difference in the y values, right? The rate of change. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We have negative one and negative four. So I'm going to subtract negative four from negative one, which will give me whenever I have two um, negatives, it becomes a positive. So it's really negative one plus four, which is three. Then I have negative four minus negative five. Um, once again, two negatives, so it's really negative four plus five. Negative four plus five, that doesn't sound right. Negative four plus five is one. I was about to say, I was about to say three because I thought this was linear, but nope. And then we have negative five minus four. Oh, I didn't need to draw brackets around this one. We get a five minus four is so negative nine. So from this, these are the rate of change values. Are they the same? Well, clearly they're not. So does that mean that they're linear? Nope, they are not linear. Nonlinear. Well, let's give this one a try too. Um, this is still a table of values. I know it's not like vertical, but it's still a table of values. Table of values can be um, both vertical and horizontal. It really depends on um, how it fits into your work book better. <laughs> so let's give this a try. We're going to look for the y values. We have rate of change in the y values. Zero minus two is negative two. Two minus Eight is negative six. Okay, so we can already see that this is not the same, so we can stop it here. Um, the rate of change is different between these two values, so we can just stop it here. This is also non-linear. Non-lin. All right. Um, the last one. Let's just kind of browse through it. Uh, four minus one is three. One minus zero is one, so that's not linear as well. Okay, moving on. Intercepts. So kind of a morpho cab. An x-intercept is the point where a line crosses the x-axis. So it's like it's a coordinate point, but it's it's just wherever if you have a if you have a line or a function, um, the place where it crosses this x-axis would be the x-intercept. So let me highlight the x-axis. So this is the x-axis. No, the same thing for the y-axis. It's just the point where a line crosses the y-axis. This would be the y-axis, right? Okay, so over here I have a few graphs. Um, let's identify the x and y-intercepts. And this is from Luke How. Yeah, I pulled it out of there. Okay, so an x-intercept. Let's first go with the x-intercepts. Um, the point where the line touches the x-axis, right? Over here, um, it does seem like two points touch it, but in reality, if we zoomed in, 
there were, there's only one point where it actually touches the x-axis. This is a quadratic function. You'll learn more about it in grade 11. But there's really only one point that touches this x-axis over here. And that would be um, blank, blank. What point, at what point does this function touch the x-axis? Zero, count back, negative one. Zero, negative one. Awesome. Well, I should use a thicker color because you can't really see that. Okay, same thing for this. Let's first work through all the x-intercepts. Um, over here, this is the x-axis, happens to be highlighted in red. We want to find this point. So it would always be zero. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, four is zero. Yeah, the y is zero, not the x. That means this one was wrong as well. Whoops. Want to find this one? It's negative one, zero, because it doesn't actually move up the y. Yeah. Okay. Um, over here, this actually is a cubic function, and it has two x-intercepts. One, actually, I can't tell. It looks like it has three, but we're going to assume. Oh, it has three x-intercepts, yeah. Oh, this one's going to be hard to discern. So one of them looks pretty obvious. Uh, zero, one, but the other one's not so much. So I think we're just going to approximate, approximate, approximate it. Oh, no, I think that's, again, it's not zero. It's not zero, one, sorry, it's one, zero. Um, yeah, we're going to have to approximate these. This looks like it's somewhere around, what, one, negative 1.7, 1. 1. maybe? 1.7, negative 1.7, 0. This looks like it's, oh my gosh, um, negative 0. 0.5, or not negative, sorry, 0. 0.5. Something like that, like it, it's approximate. You don't have to, we will learn how to calculate um, the x-intercepts later on in our next lesson. But for now, we can just approximate. Same thing over here. Now let's work on the y. Y-intercepts, I will choose a different color. Okay, so over here, the y-intercept over here looks pretty obvious. Zero, it's just this point, which is zero, one. Um, on this one, oh, it's another one where we have to approximate. Um, it looks pretty close to two. Like it's definitely closer to two than it is to three. So I want to say two point one. Agreed. Okay. Um. Now for this one, there's only one y-intercept. This one looks like it's at zero one. Oops. I should write this further. Zero, one. Okay. That's it. Um, yes, so notice how this one's a bit of a special case. The line crosses the x-axis three times, so there are three x-intercepts. Um, in grade 10, you won't be working with cubic functions or even quadratic functions that much. Mostly, you're just going to be working with linear functions, which makes it a bit um, easier. Okay. So, now, let's identify the x and y intercepts, but on a table of values this time. So, um, notice how before, over here, every time, okay, let's look at the x-intercepts first. Every time we had an x-intercept, the y value was always zero. So here was zero, here was zero, here was zero. And this is just because um, the x-axis is basically at where y is equal to zero. So um, whenever you have an x-intercept, the y will always be zero. So we can use this to our advantage by finding just basically whenever x is zero, we can look at the x, oh, sorry. Whenever y is zero, we can look at the x value. Um, so over here, we can find two zeros, one over here and one over here. Um, and these are our x-intercepts. Let's write them down. 
um, don't just write the number. Like you can't just write the number like this. You always have to include the coordinate point. I should label these as x intercepts. X ints negative four and zero. Also four and zero. It crosses the x-axis twice. Note. Um, what are our y-intercepts? So let's going going back here. Notice how um, same thing. Whenever we had a y-intercept, our x value was always zero, and this is just because simply the y-axis crosses the x-axis at zero. So whenever we have a y-value or a y-intercept, the x-intercept, the x-value is zero, and so an easy way to find our y-intercept on this table of values is to just look wherever x is zero and find the y-value on that. In this case, it's zero. Um, when x is zero, y is eight. So let's write that down. Y int. Well, I shouldn't put an s. There's only one. Y intercept is at zero eight. That's it. Okay. Now we're going to work on interpreting graphs. We want to find the x and y intercepts. And also, I should have added it, this, but we also want to find whether this is linear or not. Linear or not. Let me redraw that in. Um, so yeah, let's hop on over to at Desmos. Oh, can you see this? I am on Desmos right now. Um, I don't believe I shared my entire screen, so I'm gonna have to. Can you see this? Okay. It says that you can see this, so I will assume that you can. Um, awesome. So this is our digital graphing calculator. Um, obviously, if you have an actual calculator, feel free to input these, punch these equations into your calculator as well. But we're going to pull up our equation. So let's input, <laughs> this is a typo, I have like three ones. But our first equation to type in is y is equal to 2x plus 3. So let's do that. y is equal to 2x plus 3. And what does this look like? Well, um, it seems to be a linear function. There's no weird um, curves or anything. So this is definitely a linear function. But let's find our x and y intercepts. Our x-intercept is at, what is this? I'm gonna have to zoom in quite a bit. Seems to be at negative 1.5 and zero. And our y-intercept, oops. Our y-intercept is at three. Awesome, let's write this down. So our, okay. It was a linear function, linear, and our x intercept was at negative 1.5, 0, and our y intercept was at 0, 3. Awesome. Let's move on to our next one. So over here we have y is equal to 1 half x plus 10. You can also write 0 0.5 but usually you would use a fraction. So let's clear this. One half x plus 10. Oop, you can't see it right now, so I'm gonna zoom out a bit. So our graph looks like this, and it seems like it is the one you. Um, yes, it should be, because x has a degree of one. But let's find our x-intercept. Is that negative 20? And our y-intercept? And negative 10. 
jot things down. Here's the new planning and our effects. That was a negative 20. An easy way to tell whether um, uh, an easy way to tell what the y intercept is to is to just look at the last value of this equation, um, y equals m s plus b, the b value, which is ten. So over here, same thing. Um, it was three, right? And that was what was in the uh, last term. We're going to be talking more about this next week when we talk about slope intercept form. Okay, one last or another equation. 5x minus 3, kind of get the gist. 5x plus 3. Pass this over here. Ooh, wait, was it 3? Let me double check. Minus 3, sorry. 5x minus 3. And, okay, now see how the, the line has kind of shifted over a bit? Um, now the x-intercept is positive before it was negative, right? And the y-intercept was positive. Now the x-intercept is positive with the y-intercept is negative. So it was a linear. Our x-intercept was... Well, yeah, I, I keep on writing int because it's, it's just shorthand. It would take forever if I had to write out linear. It was 0 0.6, right? Our y intercept was negative three. Awesome. Okay, now let's move on to some of these equations. Uh, this this um, little hat thing is called a carrot. It's it's supposed to symbolize power. Like, let me write this down in the way that you would actually. Um, it's supposed to symbolize that the two is supposed to be floating above the x, but yeah. Not in um, newer calculators, you don't need to type that out anymore. But in if you have an old calculator, you may have to you may have this carrot symbol. Let me also write this down. Actually, it's a carrot. Carrot. I believe that's how you spell it. Um. Okay. So let's craft these ones. To x squared. Um, so let me pull this up, this keyboard up. There is a squared button, but if there isn't, you can also use this. Like if you're if you're not squaring something, like okay. So two x squared plus what was it? Three plus three plus three. Now our graph looks like this. Um, let's take a look. It's a quadratic function as a kind of a loop. It's called a parabola, um, but you'll you'll learn more about it next year. Um, so our x-intercept, or sorry, our y-intercept is at zero, three. But when we try to find our x-intercept, here's where we come into a problem. Our graph actually never touches the x-intercept. It floats above it. So this graph actually does not have an x-intercept. So we can just write NA for this. Oh, also, is it linear? Well, as you could have, as you saw earlier, it was not. So it was a quadratic. It was not linear. Um, and the x-intercept is non-existent. NA. Our y-intercept, same thing. We can look at the n value was positive three. We're almost done. Um, one more graph. This time we have 2x to the power of 3, so 2x cubed. That will be interesting. 2x, and then using this a, b symbol, 2x cubed plus, I believe it was 6, plus 6. Oh, you can't see this very well. 
let me let me let me um, put you on this keyboard. This is what our function looks like. It's really really skinny, um, but this is what we call a cubic function. Um, once again, you won't need to go into too much depth about this, but you will learn about it in grade twelve. Um, this will intercept at zero six, but the x-intercept is probably going to be some horrible decimal. Let's see, and I was right. Negative 1.442. It's probably not even just this. It's this is probably the rounded value. Um, but yeah, let's just go with negative 1.442. Negative 1.442, and it was not linear. Um, our x-intercept was negative 1.446. Our y intercept was there's there's a bit of background noise on my end. Apologies. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um we've covered interpreting graphs, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, uh linear and nonlinear graphs. And that's it for today's lesson. I will have this recording posted up shortly, but thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please pop them in. Um, yeah, send us a quick email. We'll try to respond as soon as we can. Hyloprep.alberta at gmail.com. And yeah, hope you enjoyed today's lesson. See you next time.